Hey everyone, this is the Integrated Math 1 practice test. Question number 15, the question says, Jessie sent an email to four people for a school project. In her email, she requested that each person copy and send that email to an additional four people. So we're working with, here's Jessie. She's sending out her email. Feels like a chain letter, doesn't it? And then each one of these people, so we'll call this person 1, person two, person three, person four. So like in the first iteration, we have four people. So each one of these will have a set. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So in the second group, we have 16. And then from there, we start to get even a different change. Instead of making you sit there and watch me do this, I put N for next generation, so there are 16 of them. So f just under this group, there are 16 here, so the next group. So I'll say there's 16 dots here, 16 dots here, 16 dots here. So you end up with 64. And then it goes on and on and on from there. Hopefully this isn't a rumor. Um, but it's about a school project, which means hopefully it's not a group project in a class or everybody's in on this. So when we have that sort of setup, it looks like it gets bigger very quickly by a large amount. Generally speaking, um, that would be, ex you would think that maybe it might be exponential. But a good way to test is, of course, to go in and say, well, I have 1 and 4. Two, and actually I'll just do it vertically. I don't know what possessed me to think I would want to do it the other way. Uh, 4, 16, 64. So that's what happens at each level after she starts, after she sends out her first email. So what we want to do is see, okay, which one of these matches? And you'll notice that the difference here as you move up each time is not linear. Like if I did 16 minus 4, I would get 12. But if I did 64 minus 16, I end up with 48. So, and this is 12. And then the difference here would be 36. But that's not, since these don't match, it's not linear. This one doesn't have any sort of connection either, partly because I didn't go down far enough. So I'm guessing it's not quadratic, not that that's even an option. But what you might notice is that if I look for a common ratio instead, if I can get my pen to work, and this is represented by the fact that 64, you'll add like 16 little dots in each one of 16, there's four groups 16. So this is a common ratio. If you have a common ratio, that's exponential. If you have a common difference, it's a linear. If you have a second difference where I tried to do the thing and got 36, that would be quadratic. And if you have a third difference, it's cubic and some other things. But the reality is that I'm looking at anything that's exponential. And I can also just test it now that I've built it. That's another way to look at it. So 4 times 1 is 4, so that's looking good in the first term. 4 times 2 is not 16, so that's out. 4 divided by 1 is 4, so that works. 4 divided by 2 is not 16, so that's out. These both have um, exponents in them, but they're not necessarily what we would consider. Uh, it's not an exponential growth. Only one of them is. This really, x to the fourth, simply means basically tell me all the values of the fourth, raising anything to the fourth power. So 1 to the fourth power is 1. 2 to the 4th power is, of course, 16. 3 to the 4th power, on and on, 81, that whole thing. So these don't match either, so this is out. When you have an exponential equation, the exponent of your input, or your exponent, yeah, your exponent should be your input value. So whatever your x is or your independent variable, that should be in the exponent's place. So this is it. 4 to the 1st is 4. 4 to the 2nd is 16. 4 to the 3rd is 64.
But anytime you see that sort of, then they give it to four more, then they give it to four more, then they give it to four more, as long as the amount that they're, as long as it's increasing by essentially a factor that's the same, so each time it's four, it's not like, you know, share it with two people and then you guys share it with four and then you guys share it with six. That's not exponential anymore. It's just large growth uh, or change. But in this case, since it's four additional people every time, it'll always increase in a consistent amount based on the common ratio of four. So we say, here's the common ratio, here's the exponent, and it's the input value, and it gives us the output value of y. So there's question number 15.